quality food. What is quality food in your definition of the phrase? It's the opposite of ultra processed food, which is whole food, which is made with uh, from the original ingredients of plants, mainly plant based, but it's not exclusively, that um, contains all the nutrients that those those plants produce without it being stripped away or uh, boiled up or uh, highly pressurized, deformed, and so they have to add in back those nutrients. So God, it's so confusing. You know, because what you've said to me is, you know, based on research and studies. But then when I go to a supermarket, labeling, even I was just thinking then cornflakes. I think I grew up thinking cornflakes were healthy because it says corn in the title. You know what I mean? And it's and when you're trying to navigate, I was just thinking if I'm going down an aisle now, hearing what you've just said, that that quality food is food that is not ultra processed and kind of resembles its original form. When you walk down the aisle in the supermarket, everything is trying to pretend that it's good. So how do I know what is good? I mean, I can go to the vegetable aisle and I can say, okay, that looks like a cabbage. It looks like no one's messed with that. There's been no study done on that. To It hasn't been through a laboratory. But how do I, like, if I'm in an aisle tomorrow, how do I know what food is good and what is not? Well, you've said the first thing. If it's not in a package, um, you, you're pretty sure it's good. Okay. okay. So um, uh, if it's concealed in some package that's got, you know, happy children and, and signals of vitamins in it, that should be a, a warning sign. Uh, you know, the more they have to advertise the food and say what its additives are and everything, the more you should be wary about it. The number of ingredients is another pretty good sign. So once you get over 10, uh, particularly if there's lots you've never heard of you wouldn't find in your kitchen, you should also be wary that that is ultra-processed food. Anything that says low calorie, that says means they've had to add in lots of artificial sweeteners or protein extracts or something else is also a big uh, danger sign. Uh, low in fat means they've replaced the natural fat with something else that's cheaper. And these are all warning signs, you know, uh, and, you know, you take breakfast cereals. I mean, I used to, I used to eat lots of breakfast cereals. I was brought up on them, highly sugary stuff. And then I thought I was being healthy when I moved to mueslis and um, posher, posher stuff. Uh, but actually when you still, you know, that appearance of healthiness, it's still got lots of additives in it. It's still got lots of sugar in it. It's just, and th those cereal packets have added vitamins in it, but they're often in a very poor form. Uh, I did an experiment once where I, um, took some cornflakes or special K, I can't remember, that says has added iron. And if you mix it up, you can put a magnet on it, you can get off the iron filings. They're so cheap that um, they just added to tick a box saying it has iron, but they don't get into your body or do anything. So anything that's got these things added with this in it, low in this, is a sign that they're obscuring the quality of the product. So it's... You know, uh, but there's a lot of brain, you know, we've had, been brainwashed for years and decades in this. And, uh, you know, I was as well as a doctor, you know, I should know better. And yet I've completely changed my, sev two of my meals completely. So I've gone from having muesli with low fat milk and an orange juice and uh, a cup of tea because I, I did, you know, when I started doing these tests for Zoe, I found out that gave me a massive sugar spike. And it was a terrible way to start the day. And I got these you know, dips at 11 o'clock to a high full fat yogurt, nuts, seeds, a few berries, and I never have orange juice. That's on my, that's a really unhealthy drink for everybody. And I have a, lots of black coffee, which I now know is good for me. So that's totally different. I changed my lunch for at least 10, 15 years, um, when I got in the hospital, I was having a hospital lunch, which used to be in the canteen, then it was the Marks and Spencers, got a healthy looking sandwich with brown bread, sweet corn and tuna and a smoothie in a little bottle. And that gave me a massive sugar spike. And I wouldn't have known that. And I was told that should have been a healthy thing to eat. So, you know, there's, there's general rules, but also there are specific rules.
and this whole idea of individuality is coming in. So it could be that you could, you might be fine on that. Don't know. Um, I was very annoyed because when I started, we were starting doing this testing for Zoe. I had all these spare kits and I gave my wife one as well. And we sit down and she's um, French Belgian and loves croissants. And so we'd have croissant each. Mine would shoot up. She had no change at all in her, her, her sugar, which Ugh. was really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's not straightforward. Yes, I've got this list of 10 superfoods. It's, it's understanding that many foods that uh, you know, are healthy for us, most of them are. In their, in their original form. Berries, nuts, um, virtually every vegetable is healthy for us if it's in that original form. It's only because we've, we had to learn to preserve things, we had to do trickery to make you know, margarines and things that, with chemistry that we've moved away from that. But you know, going back, you know, Olive oil, for example, is, is a great example of something that would be vilified often because it had lots of fats in it. And, you know, certainly I was told, Med, oh, the Mediterranean, they have, they have olive oil and everything. It's horrible. It's all fatty. Turns out that's, that's a perfect, you know, it comes from the olive. The good stuff, extra virgin olive oil, has very little done to it. And that is a, a good, healthy, quality food. But it can be refined. You can take that and you can keep refining it. Um, you can take corn on the cob as an example, and then you you know, and then you've got I don't know uh, tortilla chips or something down the other end, is, which bears or cornflakes, which bears no resemblance to the original, and they're all versions on the spectrum. It, everyone loves simplistic rules, but you can only get so far with them you have to start experimenting yourself and see what works for you and that if you realize there are these individual differences you realize it's not as simple as you've been told it's not that fats are evil it's not that calories are bad you know it's it, it's much more nuanced if you love the diary of a ceo brand and you watch this channel please do me a huge favor become part of the 15 percent of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button it helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets the bigger the guests